studio with a green screen. Love your background. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> So for those uh, for those that have no idea what you're in front of, what is it? Well, for, for all one of the people listening, um, this is the carousel. This is a Burning Man art project that I did the lights for. This is a late evening before it got completely dark picture. If I move out of the way here, you can see the, the central column is the... Uh, well, it's the central column. These vertical lines of lights are animated. These are uh, boxes that are back illuminated, single color per, per panel, and they stayed the same all the way around. And the whole thing rotated under human power until it didn't. That's right, until it didn't, because moving parts are subject to physics <laughs> but we fixed it we kept we kept repairing it i think it kept it spinning more or less until the end although not as smoothly yeah we had, we had to, it was battery powered you had like a car battery in there to run the thing all night we had to change that every morning and recharge it yeah no it worked right yeah i've got some so go. for those that are not familiar with burning man art projects like this not all of them but this one in particular was burned at the uh at the event celebrating the circle of regional effigies, which this was a part of. And, uh, you know, we removed all the electronics, anything that was bad to burn, but the wooden uh, structure and all of the art was burned on Thursday, along with all of the other many regional effigies for all the different Burning Man regions. So I'll include some, some photographs of that at the end. All right, it's 10. Welcome to Open Research Institute's FPGA stand-up. Uh, it's the 21st of March, 2023. And let's go ahead and just kick it off. Let's uh, let's go to James first so that he can uh, give his report. And if he has to leave, then he can go. Just a moment that you uh, asked this dog's barking. One moment. <laughs> yeah, I got birds here, so we're, we understand. All right, go ahead, Paul. Okay. Um, for the last week, we've been fiddling around with some of the same stuff, but do I have any milestones to report? Yeah. I don't know. I've been a little got, bit slowed I, down the last couple of days with a cold. Yeah. No, I got I got a slideshow for my part that I hopefully will incorporate the stuff that we've been working on. So yeah, don't sure. worry. Just is there any particular concerns or needs or or any equipment you need for um, you know, for for the the lab? Uh, not that I know it. We do have a new piece of equipment on order for the lab. Do you want to talk about that or you want me to cover it? I will. I'll talk about it in a bit. Okay. I think that's all. Their, their lab is cooking along and we're using yeah. it. Yeah. No, it's working good. Um, thank you. Your your efforts and uh, and all of your expertise is deeply appreciated. Okay. So... Hello, Everest. How, let go ahead and turn it over to to Everest, and then and then James, if he's if he's got things uh, you know under his fingers there. But uh, Everest, you have the floor. Okay, just uh, very quick, um, because I <laughs> I was uh, here for one week now, so didn't do anything. Instead, uh, staying in the bed <laughs> with uh, some temperature. So um, just oh, no. uh, watching you. <laughs> yeah, so watching you only. Uh, yeah, uh, this is uh, influenza. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Please get well soon, and uh, we will be thinking of you. Okay, no problem. Yeah, any uh, anything that we can help with, or <laughs> anything you want, any advice you have to give? Uh, I just uh, just have some news about Shoto, who has um, uh, implemented the, uh, the pilots, so uh, I have to, uh, to test it. Oh, fantastic. That's really good news. Yeah, pilots, for those of you that don't know, pilot signals are uh, signals that come out, and just like a lighthouse, they, they help the receiver um, 
receive. So the pilot signals are powerful, very simple signals that are at a regular interval. And this helps in several ways. So it, it helps you uh, both in frequency and time. Um, pilot signals are optional in DVB S2, S2X, and we include them uh, to make our receivers have an easier time of, of doing stuff. Uh, so getting the pilots working in the uh, transmitter is a, is a good deal. Thank you. And please get well soon. <laughs> it's been a, a, a tough go when you're ill. So yeah, all right, James, I'm trying to turn it over to you if you got it. Yep, all taken care of here. Um, doing fairly well at Remote Lab South, we've been continuing some of our outdoor work with the uh, weather permitting, though this next week we're expecting to see a bit more rain. But uh, even with that, we should be doing fairly well. We're working more in inside this week because of the weather, and I'm also going to be a bit less active because this is finals week for me. But otherwise, we're doing fairly well down here at Remote Lab South and getting more preparations done. Yeah, best wishes on the final exams. And I think I saw some a vehicle, a very interesting vehicle that you all have and that will probably help with the infrastructure. And uh, it looks like things are going well. And I'll coordinate. Uh, it'll be at least next week uh, before we can coordinate the final uh, schedule for delivering the lab equipment and, and being there in person. And then, of course, we're also looking forward to September, where we have the big conference for um, the IEEE conference in, in September in Little Rock, Arkansas. So there's lots that's going to be happening at Remote Lab South. And uh, yeah, best wishes on finals or midterms or, uh, you know, tests that are coming up, exams. We uh, support you and, and wish you the best of luck. Uh, thank you. I'll be doing my best. Yeah, understand. Cool. Okay. That's, uh, that's great. The, um, I got some reports, so I will attempt to share here. <laughs> Okay, so you have three things to report and and then a little bit about our our upcoming um, edition of the newsletter. So we, we now have a newsletter. It's uh, at least monthly. We try. Uh, sometimes we, we send out a special edition and the next newsletter will come out on our favorite holiday, which is um, April Fools. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I know I've told people all along that our favorite holiday is Halloween, but no, it's really April Fools. So be aware, there may be some pranking in the newsletter when it comes out. So here we are um, at our standup, and there's there's three things that we know about. We have an issue with the DVB FPGA that was raised by David Horowitz. We have an, a big update for uh, lab equipment and and some some protocol development and uh, sort of a, a, a publishing schedule for Neptune. And we have some, some progress on opulent voice. So David wrote to us through GitHub issues. He says he has an issue sending data to the encoder. This is our DVBS2 encoder from Swato via AXI stream interface. And he's just not getting it to send out data. And he has some stream connections issue. The XI stream is not active. He wants to share his design. Now he's using this, I believe, on the RFSOC. This is a new um, radio frequency communications chip from Xilinx. It's a very similar development platform to the ADRV9371 that we use, but it's um, it's got a lot more communications support on it. So he's he's got a similar um, development board, but it's not quite the same. And he's asking for help. This is about five days ago. So I haven't seen any action on this, but I'm pretty sure that there's communications going on. So I'd like to elevate this up um, and put it out there. I'll let you know that on our GitHub at uh, at our at our GitHub site for DVB FPGA that we have this issue. And let's figure out the problem with something we'll help with or have control over. Now there, and also, there also is a recent change. So uh, Swatch has updated the Light Fury. Uh, I think that's Light Fury and not Fury, but the block design. And as Everest mentioned, that there's uh, progress on the pilots, which is huge. So all of this is a big deal. Thank you so much for everybody that's working so hard to make this a reality. This is a complicated, big 
uh, digital thing. It's a great design. We really like this protocol and we really want to enable open source use of, uh, of DVB S2, S2X and to get um, just a broader interest in uh, these sort of uh, digital communications protocols. Amateur radio and citizen scientists and hobbyists really deserve to, to have modern techniques. And we're here to try to help that every way we, that we can. All right, the next thing I have to talk about is opulent voice. This is our uplink protocol. So this is a, uh, as you might, might guess and or know that the the opulent uh, is a riff on Opus, the Opus codec. So what we do is we take the Opus open source uh, voice codec, and we use it as sort of the the base design for the for the uplink. The University of Puerto Rico is going to use it in their upcoming uh, sounding rocket launch at Wallops and or for Roxat, and we're very happy about that. We're trying to make that happen as best we can. Um, and we are also trying to take our uh, protocol, um, which has some, some demonstrated uh, prototypes and, and implementations, and we're moving it to FPGA. So our, our method here is to use MATLAB and Simulink, use HDL Coder Toolbox, which we have through our startup license to produce open source, clearly readable via Verilog and VHDL uh, implementations of, of this for both the receive and transmit. And in the upper part of your screen, you can see a very colorful, like circular mandala thing. Well, that's uh, just one of the visualizations from modeling this in MATLAB. And this is a whole bunch of different channel models with increasing or actually decreasing SNR. So as the noise gets higher and higher, the uh, signal gets more and more kind of out of control. Here's what it looks like in MATLAB right now for opulent voice. Uh, upper left is the modulated signal. This is what it looks like. Uh, it's about, got about a 54 kilohertz bandwidth right now for the, the high definition voice for ARI FSK. It's minimum frequency shift keying. This is what it looks like when you modulate it with some of the system objects in MATLAB. The middle bottom is what it looks like when you transmit it through channels. So you take the signal, you transmit it, through your channel. And when you transmit it over the air, you may have lots of noise or not a lot of noise. And what we've done is modeled that. So you can see that on the top, the noise is actually higher than the signal. And towards the bottom, the noise barely touches the signal. And so what we do is we have a complete a collection of different channels that we send our signal through to try to see like what's going on with it. On the upper right, this is what happens after you use the receive filter. So we used a match filter approach and we are, uh, you know, calming down the noise. You can see that it's, uh, uh, you know, the, it's sort of the expected result. And in some cases you get a signal emerging out of the noise and in other cases it's still kind of buried. And we have bit error rate curves. What we're trying to do is make absolutely sure that we understand all of the theory that matches up with our implementation. We're going to take this implementation of MATLAB, we're going to take it to Simulink, we're going to take it to HDL Coder, and then we're going to publish VHDL, uh, VHDL slash Verilog code open source for this type of communications protocol. And it does fill a niche that, you know, fills a need that doesn't really exist right now. We have a High definition voice. It starts out at 16 kilobit per second Opus uh, voice codec. Can be used on 70 center region above, and can you can do data or voice. Uh, the protocol in is built to handle either voice or data without having to switch to a second uh, packet mode. Uh, so we would like this to be very very user friendly, and to to kind of fill that fill that need. It also has authentication and authorization uh, sort of built in. So this is in the protocol so that you can use those sorts of functions. And finally, uh, Neptune is a, a drone related project that we are uh, pushing forward and, and working hard to make happen. It's an OFDM, orthogonal frequency division multiplexing protocol. It's an open protocol. And if you're familiar with 
uh, maybe uh, cellular OFDM, you will see a lot of similarities with this. We take out like the things that work, um, you know, and focus on like what is it that really makes this uh, sort of an amazing modulation. Sort of put it put it at the pos strongest possible uh, placement, and then make it really useful in a particular market. And this is this is intended for for aeronautics and drones. Um, and we're actively making sure that this protocol will still work for for space as well. So we're we're looking towards like CC CCSDS and uh, NASA uh, guidance to make sure that uh, OFDM in space will 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 still work. Uh, that we may have a, a solution for some of the problems that are being posed by um, by the by the missions, particularly uh, lunar missions and deep space missions. So we're we're ready here, uh, but. But the immediate need and the immediate market and, and application is for, for drones. That means that we'll get a lot of attention towards lightweight, low power, efficient. Uh, there's a there's an emphasis on on video. So those are the sorts of bandwidths that we're looking at for this particular protocol. Um, it's called FlexLink and will should be published very soon. So what we'll, what you'll see first is the physical layer followed by the data link layer. What we've done in order to prepare for supporting this project is to purchase an ADRV 9002. Uh, this is analog devices chipset, the 9002. And the ADRV is the analog devices radioverse. This is their dev board. So it's it's designed to show off the 9002 chip and to give it a lots and lots of peripherals. You plug it into a baseboard that has a powerful FPGA so that you can run it. The ADRV 9002 comes in two variants. So it's not like our 9371 that is the entire frequency range of the, the underlying chip. It uh, breaks it out into two uh, boards. One of them is like, uh, I think it's 300 megahertz to three gigahertz. The other is three gig to six gig. Since five gig is where the drones are at, where we've, we've selected uh, at least for now, uh, at least one. Uh, the version that will support five gigahertz. So we got the three gig to six gig version. It'll be here in a couple of days. It will go, it will fit onto the ZCU 106, the Xilinx uh, FPGA development baseboard. And we are definitely going to use HDL Coder from MATLAB to implement this design. So there's two things that this will help us with. It will produce uh, VHDL and, ver and or Verilog code that will implement this particular uh, FlexLink protocol. What this will also give us, um, which I'm, I'm very excited about, is some real experience with implementing a really a pretty complicated design using this particular tool set, which is industry standard. And that will allow us to inform open source tools developers as like, what do you really need to worry about? What worked really well in HDL Coder, what was missing, what was done well, um, what's, what its capabilities are in 2023. Um, and I think that that will be of great benefit for all of us. Uh, so that's our goal. The other, the other stuff that I have to talk about, okay, so we have a class coming up because HDL Coder is non-trivial. Uh, it's a toolbox from MATLAB that you can't get if you have the home license. So those of you that have the home license, you might have noticed that there's a couple of toolboxes that you simply can't get, and HDL Coder is one of them. The reason that you can't get it is because MATLAB says they have so many calls for tech support that if you have the $150 license, they just, they can't afford it. Okay, so I have some opinions about this, but let's set that aside, fine. Uh, but we have HDL Coder and we can get some technical support. So we also get from, from MathWorks um, with our license, we get a custom class. And so what we are putting together is a class that will be virtual for people that want to take it. Yes, it will cost some money and it will teach you digital, digital communications, digital radio, from an open source perspective, 
That is what we're wanting to put into this. How to use these tools that we have access to through our startup license for you. Like, how do you get to execute fancy radios with this stuff, with code that you own, that you can publish, that then can be used as a baseline for other designs? So that's what we would like, is this is leverage. This is a big step forward. Um, it includes MATLAB and Simulink and HDL Coder. We're, we're looking at, um, and we're trying to finalize a draft of the virtual class content today, send it to MathWorks, get their opinions on what they think would work for for a class since this is at least four different classes sort of cut up, mixed up, and then and then sort of reimagined for our community. We're gonna try to schedule and carry out this class as soon as possible. And and there's lots of benefits. So that's that's the goal with this particular class. Finally, um, there are open source options here. So there's Amaranth, which is a Python-based uh, framework for converting. I'm not going to say it converts Python directly into HDL, uh, but it's that's kind of the aim and goal. We have a wonderful article that we will have uh, in our April newsletter. Um, we have a guest editor. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much to Dr. Estefes for agreeing to do this. Um, he has written a fantastic article about Maya. This is his, um, this is, he authored Maya. This is a, uh, a project and what it does is it's an implementation of digital uh, a spectrum anal analysis, a spectrum analyzer on the Pluto. And it is entirely on the FPGA in the Pluto and it was written with Amaranth. So and then this is a completely open source tool chain uh, project product. This is very exciting. This is where we wanna go. And uh, please, if you have not um, subscribed to our newsletter, please do because on April 1st, we will not only have a prank or two or three, but we also have this wonderful guest editorial by Dr. Estafas. And I think that's it for me, so I will I will stop sharing. Are we, any questions, comments, or anything uh, that we need to do, or anything I missed? Okay, thank you very much. I'll shut down the uh, our stand-up meeting for today. We're going to keep working hard and keep showing you forward progress and and keep making it possible for folks to contribute however we can. And uh, We'll now move into to office hours uh, for for open discussion. Mm -hmm.